Hi everybody, I'm going to go through the June 2019 IGCSE Paper 1 HR and uh, let you know how I would do all of these questions so hopefully you can pick up some hints and tips before your real thing. So, question one, what we would do here is turn this fraction into top heavy times and flip the second one. So, 4 and 2 thirds will become 14 thirds. We turn it into a times and we flip the second one. So one and one ninths would be 10 ninths. So we're gonna flip that upside down to get nine tenths. We can cross cancel these. So seven, five, one and a three to give us 21 over five, which when we divide that, gives us fives into 21 go four, remainder one, like that. Jelena left her home at 10. She stopped at a friend's house and then continued to the park. Did she cycle faster before or after she stopped at her friend's house? So when we're talking about speed, that is the gradient of these lines. So the gradient of the first line, you could probably see is slightly more steep than the second one, but you might want some numbers to back that up. So speed equals distance divided by time. So for the first phase of the graph, so this part here, we've gone 15 kilometers in one hour. So that's a speed of 15 kilometers per hour. And in the second phase of the graph, which is this one, she's traveled from 15 to 24. So 24 minus 15. So she's gone nine kilometers. And the time taken is from 11.15 to 12 o'clock. So nine kilometers in 45 minutes, that's three quarters of an hour. Okay, now if you have the white calculator, then you can change 45 minutes into hours by using the time button, which is a degrees uh, it looks like a circle and then a comma and then a double quotes. So you can use that button to change that. So 9 divided by 0 0.75 is 12. So you can show that that speed is slower, slightly slower, by doing some calculations there. She stayed at the park for 45 minutes and then cycled with a constant speed of 16 back home. Put all that information on there. So, stayed at the park for 45 minutes. So we're gonna do 45 minutes is three of these squares. So we're gonna go to about there. And then 16 kilometers per hour. So they've gone 24 kilometers in a, a speed of 16 kilometers per hour. So we have to work out how many 16s go into 24. And that will give us the time taken. So that is uh, fours into that goes six. That's 1.5. So we need to make this last 1.5 hours. So from here, 12.45, an hour and a half would be 145, 215. So here we have to make sure that our line finishes there. So that part of the graph is going to go to there. For question 2c, to work out the average speed, we need the total distance traveled and the total time taken. And it says do not include the times when she was not cycling. So Let's have a look at the total distance traveled would be 15, 24 and the 24 kilometers back. So that will be 48 kilometers. And then we need the total time taken. So the first phase of the graph was one hour. Then we had the 45 minutes. So we'll have one hour 45 
to get to the park. And then we came back in 1.5 hours. So one hour 30. So that will give us two, three hours 15. That is 3.25 hours. So the total distance traveled. So speed equals distance divided by time. So we're going 48 kilometers in total, 3.25 hours. And when we do that division, we get 48 divided by 3.25. 14.8 kilometers per hour. Simplify this, we subtract the powers to get e to the power of 4, and then we multiply those two to get y to the power of 16. Expand and simplify, we've got x squared minus 2x plus 9x, and then plus 9 times minus 2 is minus 18. So when we collect those together, we're going to get 7x there. Factorize the things that go into both. We have a 4, a c, and a p squared. That will go into both. So we're going to do 4c cubed plus 5p. That will multiply out to give that expression. Complete the table of values. So on the white calculator, we have the table function. So menu, go down to number nine, which is table. And we're going to put x squared minus 3x minus 1. And we start at negative 2 and finish at 4 and go up in steps of 1. So the negative 2 one, that will be 9. Then we go 3, negative 1, negative 3, go down, negative 1, 3. So it repeats that pattern. In the exam, you might need to do a bit of working there to show how you got those. So substituting, for example, y equals minus 2 squared, minus 3, lots of minus 2, minus 1, would give you 9. Plot those on the graph, so minus 2, 9, then it goes 3, uh, sorry, was it negative 1? Yeah, negative 1, negative 3 twice. And then 4 should be 3 again, is that right? Yeah. So with these curves, we need to make sure that we don't have any straight lines as best we can, especially around the vertex. So this is symmetrical around this point. So it should kind of curve up like that. Okay. Try not to make any straight edges as you, as you draw this, that one wasn't very good. Go up through there and curve down like that. Becky has a biased six-sided dice. So you know that the probabilities must all add up to one. That's the rule for probability. So 2x plus 0.18 plus 2x plus 3x plus 0.26 plus x must all equal one. So we've got 2x, 4x, 7x, 8x, and we'll rearrange this. So 1 minus 0 0.18 plus 0 0.26. 0 0.18 plus 26 is 4, 4. So 1 minus that is 5, 6. 0 0.56 is 8x, so x equals 0 0.07. And we need to work out an estimate for the number of times that the, the dice will land on an even number. So even is going to be 0.18, 3x, and x. So that's 4x plus 0 0.18. That's the probability of getting even. 
So 4x is 0.28 plus 0.18 uh, is 0.46, I think, 0.46. Let me just check that. 4 times 0 0.07 plus 0.18. Yeah, so if Becky's going to throw the dice 200 times, we're going to do 200 times the probability of getting even. So 200 times that is 92. Question six is a cuboid made from wood and the density is 0 0.7. So work out the mass. So density equals mass over volume. So mass would be density times volume. So the density is 0 0.7 multiplied by the volume, 12 times 5 times 8. So 0 0.7 times uh, 12 times 5, 60 times 8 is 480. So multiply that by 0 0.7, 48 times 7, 336. Oh, sorry. Let's just check that. Times 12, times 5, times 8, 336. Three, yep, that's the mass in grams. Right, 5.7 times 10 to the 6 is an ordinary number. So 5.7. Uh, we would have five zeros after that. One, two, three, four, five, six decimal places. Four. So we would go one, two, three, one, two. Four times ten to the minus three would give us that because we could move the decimal places three slots to the right. 2 times 10 to the 4, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, plus 3 times 10 to the 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, divided by 6.4 times 10 to the minus 2, so that's going to be 0 0.064. We can do that on our calculator, so we've got 2 times 10 to the 4 time oh add sorry add 3 times 10 to the 5 divided by 6.4 to the negative 2 that gives us 5 million so 5 million would be 5 times 10 to the 6 on January 1st Lee bought a boat for $170,000 and it depreciates. So we're going to use our compound interest formula. 1 minus the percentage over 100 to the power of number of years. So 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, that would be three years worth of depreciation. So we're going to do 170,000 times 0 0.92 cubed. That gives us 132,376.96. So we always check our accuracy, nearest dollar, 132377. Diagram shows a shape made from a right angle triangle and a semicircle. Work out the area of the shape. So we need to know the radius of this so that we can work out the area of the semicircle, which will be pi r squared over 2. And the area of the triangle will be half the base times the height. So we have a 6 and a 6 there. So the area of that triangle is half base times height, which would be 18 centimeters squared and we actually need that 
let's call that m for the midpoint we need to find out that length there so we're going to use pythagoras to work out the whole length of a c and then half it to get the length m so a c squared is six squared plus six squared so a c is the square root of 72 which is six root two and then we're going to half it for mc mc was half the length of ac because it's the midpoint which is three root two so now we can work out the area of the semicircle so pi r squared pi three root two squared and then divide it by two because it's a semicircle so 3 root 2 squared will be 9 times 2, 18 over 2 is 9 pi. So the total area of the shape will be the area of the triangle plus the 9 pi for the semicircle. 18 plus 9 pi, 46.3 centimeters squared to one decimal place. Okay, so we've got something as a product of its powers, of its prime factors. If it's 8a, 8 lots of a, we have 8 is 2 cubed if we express that as a product of its prime factors. So we've got 2 cubed times 2 to the n times 3 times 5 to the m. So that was our original a, and we've multiplied it by 8. So now we can add the powers, 2 to the power of n plus 3, because we times those together, times 3 times 5 to the m. Question 11 is bounds. So when we have a bounds question, we look at the accuracy nearest integer. We go plus or minus a half of that accuracy. So a is going to be 5.5 to 6.5 and then 15 correct to the nearest 5 so we go plus or minus a half of 5 so we're going to go plus or minus 2.5 so we're going to go down to 12.5 and up to 17.5 so now we have that information we can do the upper bound of c will be the largest b minus the smallest a, which will be 12. Factorize this. Um, if you're not sure, you can put this into your calculator and solve it as if it was equal to zero. And that will give you your two x values. And then the bracket would be the opposite of that. Or you can do, uh, this is the a level method for solving these where you do a and c multiplied by 2, which is 12, and look for factors of 12 that differ by 7. So I'm going to rewrite this as the two factors that differ by 7, uh, sorry, or add to give 7, is minus 3x and minus 4x. So I've just written that expression out with the minus 3x and the minus 4x, and that came from 2 times 6, which is 12. So I would factorize these separately, like split this down the middle like this, and we should have the same brackets if we've done this correctly. Let me just check that. So x minus 2, 2x minus 3. Let me just check that on the calculator. So menu, go down to polynomial, 2, negative 7, and 6. So you get x equals 2, so the bracket will be x minus 2, and 3 halves, so the brackets will be 2x minus 3. Okay, solve this equation. We'll multiply both sides by 3. To clear that, comp that, that denominator, and then expand this out and then 
rearrange this. So it adds 6m to both sides and subtract 9 from both sides. So m will be 21 minus 9 is 12 divided by 10, which is 1.2. Write that whole thing in a single power of y. So the fourth root of y is y to the power of a quarter. And then we're dividing by y to the power of 1. If you write it like that, then you can subtract these powers like that. So y to the power of negative 3 quarters. In group C, there are six girls and eight boys. So we would have six girls out of the total, which is eight plus six. And the boys would be eight out of 14. And in group D, there are three girls out of 10. And the same for the bottom half. Work out the probability that there are two boys in the team. So probability that we go pick boy and boy will be 8 out of 14 multiplied by 7 out of 10. So 56 out of 140. Uh, that will cancel down two-fifths. After the first team has been picked, a second team is picked. One child is picked at random from the children left in group C and one child is picked from group D. Work out the probability that there are two boys in each of the two teams. So we've already done the probability of boy then boy. We have to then multiply that by the probability of picking a boy and a boy again. So we've already got the two fifths. Now we have to multiply by what's left over. So we had eight from 14 boys. So we've now got seven from 13 and six from nine. Seven from 13 and six from nine. I think that's right. So two fifths times 42 over 13 nines is 117. And I don't think that cancels. So that would be 84 over five times 117 would be five. Uh, five times that eight, five, I think. Uh, Two fifths times seven thirteenths times six ninths. 28 over 195. Just check 84 over 585. Yeah, that's the same answer. So I think that that would be the probability of picking four boys. Question 14, right, we've got this strange notation here. X is such that, that's what the two dots, the colon means there, X is such that. So it's just a roundabout way of writing. Basically, you can ignore this like that. So list the members of positive integers that are less than 12 and between seven and 16. So if you had a number line, 7, 12, and 16, it would be, that would be set B, but that would be filled, and it also has to satisfy being less than this. So hopefully you can see that we can ignore these, because that would break the rule of A. So it's between 7 and 12, but not 12. So we'd go up to 11 there. C is a subset, so that 
means subset of A, and they're even numbers. So let's have a look at A again. A is anything less than 12, so you can have 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. And one possible set, so you, you could choose any three numbers from those five that you wanted. Recurring decimals, so we always do the same process. Let x equal 0 0.25454. And you have two dots, so we're going to multiply by 100. 100x equals 25.454. So hopefully you can see when you multiply by the number of dots, decimals line up like this, and we can subtract them. So 99x, we'll subtract these like that, 25.2 divide by 99 but we're not allowed to have decimals in the fraction so we're going to times by 10 to get 252 over 90 uh, sorry 990 so 252 over 990 yep that does equal 14 over 55 um, you might want to show some cancelling down so maybe divide by 2 and you get 126 over 495 and 495 divided by 5 so sorry 495 divided by 3 is 165, 126 divided by 3 is 42, and we're starting to get down to these. So 165 divided by 3, yeah, that goes to there, and that divided by 3 is 14. Question 16, we have the first five terms of an arithmetic sequence, so we can use the formula at the front to find the sum of 100 terms. So it's n over 2 multiplied by 2 times the first term a plus n minus 1 times the difference between these. So the difference between each of those is 3. So we have 50 times 14 plus 99 is 297. 50 multiplied by um, 311, so that would be 5, 5, 5, 1, and times by 10, 15,550. Question 17, these are similar shapes, so we are actually given a length scale factor here, so the length of A to the length of B is 24 to 36. So we divide both sides by 24 and we get a ratio of 1 to 1 1.5. The surface area scale factor is the square of this. So 1 squared, 1.5 squared. And vase A has a surface area of 960. So I'm going to multiply this by 960. So I'll do the same to the other side. 960 times 1.5 squared. 960 times 1.5 squared is 2,160 square centimeters. Phase B has a volume of V. Find in terms of V an expression for the volume of A. Okay, so the volume of A to the volume of B will be 1 to 1 1.5 cubed. And we're actually given the volume of B. So let's divide both sides by 1.5 cubed to 
give me my ratio in this sense because now I can times by V to get my volume of B and then I times the left hand side by V will be giving me V over 1.5 cubed. So V over 1.5 cubed is 3.375. They might expect that as a ratio, uh, sorry, as a fraction. So V over 27 eighths. So if you're dividing by a fraction, you times it and flip it. So that would be eight V over 27. Question 18, a diagram showing triangle PQR, calculate the length of PR. So there's no right angle, so we're gonna be using sine rule here or cosine rule and we just have to decide so there's only one angle and two sides and we're asked to find out the third side so that will be cosine rule so we'll call this one a because this is opposite the angle that we're talking about so we'll get a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared this is in the front if you're not sure uh, a squared plus b squared minus 2b c cosine a like that so we just have to stick that all in the calculator 17.8 squared 26.3 squared minus 2 times 17.8 times 26.3 times cos 36, 251, 0 0.06, so we square root that to get A, A equals 15.8 centimetres, the 3 SF. Just check your answer to see if it makes sense. 36 degrees is quite a small angle, so the opposite to that would be quite a small length in, compar in comparison to the other two sides. So that kind of makes sense. Okay, histogram. We've got the frequency density at the side. So frequency density is the frequency divided by the class width. So 15 over the class width of 20, that's 3 quarters. 48 over... 20 to 35 is 15. So what's that? 3 and 3 fifteenths. 3 and 3 fifteenths is 1 fifth. So 3.2. 21 over 5 is 4.2. And 16 over 10 is 1.6. So 15 to 20 was 0 0.75 so sorry how, how long was that 0 to 20 so you would have your bar going at 0 0.75 20 to 35 is 3.2 so that would go across there Thirty-five to forty is four point two. And forty to fifty is one point six. So it look something like that. Question twenty. We have a tangent and some circle theorem. So when you have a tangent, you can either go to the center to make uh, a 90 degrees, so from the tangent to the center, or you'll have alternate segment theorem, which is a tricky one, but um, essentially you have the angle 71. If I connected A to C through there, that would be 71 as well. So these are the, the things that we can try to do. So if I take this into the center here, uh, let's not call it C, let's call it O, 
then we would have a right angle in here. So that gives us 19 degrees in there. And because this is isosceles, that would be a 19 in there as well. So hopefully you can see I've created a kind of arrowhead there. A, B, O, D. I'll just kind of highlight that a little bit there. So we've actually got a four-sided shape in here. And that means that this angle, let's call that X. And then this angle here would be a four-sided shape. They're actually the internal angles, so they, they would all add up to 360. We also know that when we have that arrowhead shape, that this is 2x. That's double the angle at the point. The, point, the, the angle at the point is double the angle at the circumference. So this is 360 minus 2x. So we can add up those four angles x plus 19 plus 19 plus 360 minus 2x, and that will give us angles in a four-sided shape, 360. Cancel both of those. Take the 2x over, and 2x minus x is equal to 38. So x equals 38. So I now know this angle here. And that's helpful to us because they want us to find the size of angle B, C, D, all of that in there. And because we have a cyclic quadrilateral where all A, B, C, and D are all points on the circle, that means the opposite points add up to 180. So I know that B, C, D plus X is equal to 180. Hopefully you can see BCD here and this here add up to 180. So BCD is 180 minus 38, which is 142. Question 21 is a hemisphere and a cylinder, and they have the same radius. So let's put the radius in there. And the ratio of the radius of the cylinder to the height of the cylinder is 1 to 3. So this can be 3R for the H. The solid has volume 792 pi. So we can work out the volume of the cylinder. Let's do volume of the cylinder is pi R squared H. So pi times r squared times h, which is 3r, is 3 pi r cubed. The volume of the sphere, or hemisphere, is 4 thirds pi r cubed divided by 2, because it's a hemisphere. So that's 2 thirds pi r cubed. And the question tells us that those two volumes added together give 792 pi. So we have the volume of the uh, cylinder, 3 pi r cubed, plus the volume of the hemisphere, 2 thirds pi r cubed, is equal to 792 pi. We can cancel the pi's. And we have 3r cubed plus 2 thirds r cubed is 8 thirds, no it's not, it's 11 thirds, sorry. <laughs> yeah, 11 thirds r cubed is 792. So I'm going to divide both sides, 792 divided by 11 thirds is 216. So r cubed is 216, so r is the cube root of 216, which is 6. So we now know the radius is 6. The height of the cylinder is 3r, which is 3 times 6, which is 18. And the total height of the solid, we actually have a radius 
going up right through the middle there as well. So another R for our height. So we have to do 18 plus R would be the total height of this solid, 24 centimeters. Question 22, this is the graph of sine x. We have to do a transformation of this graph. So we're going to do sine of x plus 30. That is a shift to the left, opposite way you think, by 30 degrees. So each point is 30 degrees to the left. So this point here, that will be there. This will be here. That will be there. So effectively, it's just shifted 30 degrees. So you have to kind of draw it like that. That will go through there. And we would have to extend that graph slightly so that it it's in the range of 0 to 360. So that would be x plus 30. But we have to do 2 sine x. This is like having f of x. And then we do 2 f of x. So that's a scale factor of 2 in the y direction. So everything has to be multiplied by 2 for the y coordinates. So that's 0.5. That's going to go to 1. That one there is going to go to 2. This one's going to go to 1. That will be at 0. So everything's kind of double. We can just take the, the main points there. Goes down like that. So it's going to be a kind of larger curve from physics. It's the amplitude of the wave like that. Okay, so this form of the equation is telling you to complete the square. So we're going to do x. We halve the term in front of the x and just subtract that thing squared. So whatever we put there, we just subtract it squared plus 10. That gives us x minus 3 squared minus 9 plus 10 is plus 1. Describe the transformation that maps the curve y equals x squared onto that one. So the reason that we complete the square is it tells us the vertex of the point is the opposite for the x coordinate of that number there. So negative 3 becomes positive 3 and the plus 1 is the y coordinate. So that is the vertex of the graph and we have to move y equal x y equals x squared onto that where the vertex is at 0 0 so hopefully you can see i go across 3 and up 1 so this is a translation 3 across and 1 up question 23 is a kite AB equals AD and CB equals CD. So the kite will look something like, if AB equals AD, we're going to have it like this way around. Or the B and the D, I guess, could be the other way around. And B has coordinates 10, 19, and D, 2, 7. So, okay, so let's try and put that onto a coordinate axes, 10, 19, somewhere up there. Let's call that B, 10, 19, and D is 2, comma 7, so down here. And what you need to know about kite is that the corners, if you connect those, they intersect at right angles in the middle there. So that's kind of like the logic that you need for this because we're going to connect these two together. That's BD. And then at that midpoint there, 
it will have a line coming through at right angles to it. And that would be sort of A and C would be down here somewhere. Okay, so we need to find the gradient of BD first. Then we find the perpendicular gradient and we need the midpoint to have a point that this perpendicular line goes through. So let's do midpoint of BD first. We take the average of the x coordinates, so 2 plus 10 over 2, and the average of the y coordinates, 19 plus 7 over 2, to give us 12 over 2, comma 26 over 2. So that midpoint there is 6, 13. Let's now do the gradient of BD. So the gradient of BD is equal to y2 minus y1, 19 minus 7, over x2 minus x1. And that is 12 over 8, which is 3 over 2. So 1.5 for the gradient of BD. Now we need the perpendicular gradient. This is going to be the gradient of AC. And we take the negative reciprocal. So negative, because the original gradient was 3 over 2, so we do the negative of that, which is minus, and we flip it upside down to give us negative 2 thirds. Or you can say the two gradients multiply by each other, give negative 1. So x equals minus 1 over 3 over 2 on your calculator. You could do it like that as well. OK, so we're getting there. We've got the gradient of AC. And we know that it goes through the point 6, 13. So we're going to substitute 6, 13 into this equation to try and find out the new C value which, if I just go back to this graph, the C value will be the point at which it crosses there. So, 13 equals minus 2 thirds of 6 is minus 4. So our C value is 13 plus 4. So the equation is Y equals minus 2 thirds of X plus 17. Let's just check what form it wants it in y then x equals r and they all have to be integers so we have to times everything by 3 3 y equals minus 2 x plus 51 and then it wanted 3 y plus 2 x and then the number by itself there okay so tricky question that one lots to it and then if we ever see the word displacement, then it's probably going to be differentiation, especially when they mention velocity and acceleration. So we want to find the acceleration and we're given a displacement, but when you differentiate it, it gives us the velocity. When you differentiate it again, you give the acceleration. So we know that we have to differentiate to get the acceleration, we need to do it twice. So the first differential is the velocity. The differential t cubed is three lots of t, and then we reduce the power by one. Six times two, reduce the power by one, t to the power of one, and five t differentiates to five. That's the first differential. Second differential is the acceleration so we do it again, 3t squared would be 6t, and then minus 12. Find the value of t for which the acceleration is 3. So we can replace the acceleration with 3. Add 12 to both sides, and find the time, which is 15 over 6, which is 2.5 seconds. Okay, 
Right, that's the final question. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. And if you have any questions, then please leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much.